dawn of a fatal day, and the wind begins to speak with a roar that no man can fail to hear. In a 40-mile-an-hour gale, the center span weaves like a ribbon in a swinging twist that you wouldn't believe possible unless you could see it as you do now. In some engineering applications, transient behavior can simply be ignored. However, there are applications where the presence of transients can be a nuisance with potentially catastrophic consequences. Hello, my name is Ogden Marianovic and I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering at the University of Manchester. There are many practical situations in which knowledge about the transient behavior is utilized in order to at least partially suppress the transients. This is the case with the hovercraft experiment, for example, shown here. On the other hand, knowledge about transient behavior can actually be utilized constructively in order to utilize the transients, which is the case with the power conversion systems. Both of these types of applications will be covered in this mini-lecture. First application of utilizing transient behavior is the conversion of electrical power from one form to another. This power conversion is exactly what enables us to integrate various renewable energy sources into the standard grid. It also allows all of our electronic equipment to be powered from the AC grid, even though this equipment actually requires constant non-alternating DC voltage. The power conversion systems are based on using switching devices, namely transistors, that create voltage signals such as the one shown in this graph here. Notice how the voltage actually switches between two different values and the width of these pulses as it changes from high to low changes as time goes by. So what we want to see is how can we transform something as discontinuous as this voltage signal shown here to something much smoother such as the waveform shown here. Here we have a sinusoidal waveform and maybe we want to change the frequency or the amplitude of this waveform by employing power conversion systems. We utilize the transient behavior of both capacitor and inductor in order to produce smooth waveforms of voltage and current. Capacitors and inductors in essence oppose rapid changes in the voltage and current waveforms respectively. Therefore they perform smoothing of the voltage and current. However, the values of capacitance and inductance have to be chosen carefully, and this is done by having appropriate models of the circuit. Such models are simply differential equations that describe transient behavior of the circuit, such as the one shown here. If the values of inductance and the capacitance are not chosen carefully, we may end up with a highly unsatisfactory response. Just look at the waveform shown here. This is hardly a smooth sinusoidal waveform that we would like to produce but it's rather choppy and discontinuous. Having an appropriate model that describes the transient behavior allows us to find appropriate values of capacitance and inductance, such that the resulting circuit produces the required waveforms of voltage and current. This is the power feature of these models in general. Using the appropriate model, we can select the appropriate values of inductance and capacitance so that we get a much smoother response and much smoother the waveforms of voltage and current across the electrical load as shown in this particular graph here. Sometimes the transient behavior may be quite pronounced lasting long periods of time and may also be undesirable, for example highly oscillatory. So we then may want to try and modify it in order to obtain better performance from a system. So let us look at one such application. Here we have effectively a primitive form of a hovercraft which has a beam with electric fan on one side and a counterweight on the other, which can model loading conditions on the hovercraft. The objective here is to maintain a hovercraft at a steady angle, regardless of any disturbances we may apply and regardless of any changes in the loading condition. Also, we want to make sure that the hovercraft makes a transition from one angle to another with minimal amount of oscillations. Now, if we apply a constant voltage to the electric fan, we will not necessarily get a satisfactory response. As you can see here, hovercraft is actually oscillating even when it gets hit by a very temporary disturbance. This is clearly not a desirable behavior. And also, if we change the position of the counterweight, which means changing the loading conditions, the angle will be radically changed, which is unsatisfactory. 
So in the case of the hovercraft, you're trying to minimize this undesirable, highly oscillatory transient behavior by introducing appropriate control signal to the motor of the electric fan. The standard method of obtaining an appropriate control signal is to employ what we call feedback control structure. This is what we humans do ourselves anyway. So what we have here is we have an angle of the beam, which we will denote as theta, that is result of the beam. And this is influenced by the working of the fan, which is actually actuated by a DC motor, which itself is actuated by the voltage applied to the armature of the DC motor. The voltage applies, actuates the motor, which then moves the fan, which influences the beam and produces a certain angle theta. Now, this angle theta is then fed back by means of measuring it through the sensor. And inside the control system, it is compared to the desired angle. Now, this desired angle is decided by the customer, by the control engineer, what should the beam be at? What angle would we like the beam to be at? So that desired angle compared to the actual angle and the difference between them is then fed into the controller which computes the appropriate voltage in order to make sure that the actual theta is as close to the desired theta as possible irrespective of any disturbances that affect the overall system. In order to design an appropriate control system, we need to understand the transient behavior as depicted in the differential equations. So once the control system is designed, we can switch it on. So here, we actually have the signal fed into the electric fan determined by the controller which is ensuring that the angle is where we want it to be. And we can electronically modify the desired angle of the beam. We're going to raise it now. And also, we can notice how when the disturbance occurs, oscillations are minimal. Now, this is a type of behavior we didn't see before when we didn't employ feedback control. But now, with the feedback control in place, the oscillations are much, much less pronounced. Also, if we change the counterweight, which before would result in a completely different angle, now, after initial change in the angle, control system modifies the operation and brings the hovercraft back to where it wants it to be. However, when designing a controller, if we assume that there are no transients, that the hovercraft does not undergo any transient response, then we will end up with a controller that actually destabilizes the system rather than make it behave better. So here we have our control system in place, properly designed, and we're going to actually modify it so that it ignores the presence of transient behavior. And we'll see what happens. And what we will notice now is that the oscillations of the system are actually getting bigger and bigger and bigger until the hovercraft gets destroyed. Soon afterwards, we bring the controller back to its senses and the hovercraft is back in control. So we have seen that all physical real-world systems exhibit transient behavior. This could be oscillatory, it could be quite destructive. However, by appropriate understanding the transients, we can either reduce undesirable transient behavior or utilize it to create desired effects.